Hello? Hello. Morning, Ricardo. All right, uh, we will give it another minute. That was good. Uh, well, cool. So we have two items on the agenda today. Welcome to Tag Runtime meeting. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Cube donation. Uh, I assume that's a discussion, perhaps. Uh, is is that you, Hong Chao? Yes, uh, that's me. Uh, so, so we we have presented to the tag before. Uh, yeah. a couple months, uh, actually not a couple months ago, like more than half a year ago, like Ricardo was there as well. Um, yep. And so, so Kubra, it's, it's something like uh, crime mature projects, because like not, not only like internet companies like Pinterest and, and, the, and you know, like Google use it, but also like, you know, like we have hedge funds, uh, oil, even oil company and the many like people already use like Ray and Kubra. Uh, so, uh, but yep. yeah, but that, that so what's happening? What what happened last time is that um, Ricardo recommends us to apply for incubating directly, right? Um, yeah, that that was last conversation. Uh, so we so after like all these months, we have been um just going through some internal discussions, and and finally we have uh, our leadership teams uh ag agreement on like donating the project Cubre. Uh, to CNCF, uh, that that's great news. Um, so, so we we talked to Priyanka and and oh, I forget the name, uh, Daniel, uh, Dan Krug. Uh, so they they recommend us to apply for Sandbox first. So I'm a little confused. So now this time I come back to the tech. I want to consult your guys' opinions on this. Like, should we apply for Sandbox or should we apply for incubating? Like. Uh, so I think it really depends on the the traction that you have in the project. I I think Ray has a lot more traction maybe than Kubray, uh, but um, Kubray has a lot of usage of at, at, at say at least like two or three major users in production environments. I think you can go for incubation, right? So it it depends on um the the usage and the community growth. And so, I mean, you can share in the presentation what it's like, right? But um, but typically sandbox are early projects that maybe have like one or two users and maybe they don't have like um, users or end users in production environments. Uh, but if you do have more than that, it might be a good idea to apply for incubation. So uh, I think uh, Priyanka and Daniel might not be aware of the state of the project. So maybe that's that's why they're recommended to apply for a sandbox. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you know, a conversation between you and the CNCF and and trying to understand a little bit of the the maturity of the project. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I will continue to like uh do some communication more. Um 
and yeah. yeah, hopefully again. So hopefully, if we apply for incubating, we can get uh, Ricardo, your tech, and you uh to to I think this to to help with due diligence stuff as well. Yeah, we we can help with that, and yeah. So due diligence is for incubation for sandbox. You don't need due diligence, so. So it's up to you also you what stage you want to apply for. So if you want to apply for incubation, you'll need the due diligence. Uh, but we can help you with that. Sure. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's all I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Due diligence Thank and security you. review, right? Huh? And later stages. S stages? What, what, what do you mean? No, it's part of the process. Uh, you start with the due diligence, and there are like other stages um, uh, when you donate to incubation. Straight yeah, I, yeah, I'm aware of the process. Yeah, uh, that's just like currently, it's just we're not sure whether we should apply for incubating or uh, sandbox. Like, cool. Do you have external uh, maintainers? Yeah, well, we we uh, the project itself is pretty mature. We have like uh maintainers from Google, from IBM, uh, yeah. yeah, and the users we have like a lot of uh, major users like not only like Pinches and uh, Uber, but also like in you know, the hedge funds like uh like Point Seventy Two, uh, things like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. So, our yeah. for Snowflake, and we're using Ray, but we're not using Cube Ray yet. But that's, I mean, I, I think uh, there are a lot of users out there for Ray. I mean, Cube Ray maybe a little bit less, but then still like might be good enough for incubation. Yeah, basically the, as you go, you know, there's a lot of um, recommendations for things that uh, as a starting project that become more real and more required as you go down towards incubation. So things like maintainer diversity and, you know, security policies for dealing with vulnerabilities, um, you know, donating, uh, uh, like hosting the, the code in a, in a CNCF repository, things like that become more, more important as you go towards incubation. Um, so, so being able to kind of show, uh, show that show that diversity and you know have those processes and and standards and um, you know things like in internal the internal community and governance structure and things like that um, are going to come up um, much more in incubation than than sandbox would. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Um... And uh, I, so this came up with another project recently that. Uh, had a similar model where there's cube ray and ray uh is is ray also considered for for cncf or what is the status of of that relationship uh like we just start like trying to get get more like connections to the cncf and the linux foundation like previously mostly like uh the I think we are close, more closer to Apache Foundations, but but now right now, as you see, like, uh, VLM has been donated to Linux Foundation as well. So I think that's a we are beginning that, and it's a good starting point. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the 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 TOC is becoming interested more in, you know, if there's, uh, if there's a the core technology that the upper level. Um, technology uses like cube ray relying on ray um, having some alignment there that uh, it's not just like if ray were to go away right then what what is what is the state of cube ray there so having having those uh those two aligned it, it's going to come up in in discussions for sure as, as uh, this goes to the toc review so just kind of being aware of that and maybe thinking about uh, the answers there and the, the situation that, that may be asked. Oh, sure, sure. Now I'm, I'm writing notes of, of that. Uh, yeah, thanks for the reminder. Okay. Yeah, so, so the other project that came up was uh, Spin and Spin Cube. Yes, that's right. So we, so, uh, we went through some of the process with that and 
uh, spin cube was being donated to the CNCF, a sandbox actually, um, the question came up whether uh, spin, which is the underlying uh, technology behind spin cube was also going to be donated or was going to be kept open source. Uh, so that's that's still in the process of so the folks that are, are the maintainers for spin cube and spin are the same company they came back and then they, they said that they're also go, going to donate spin so that's the current state uh, i don't know what the the idea is for ray but like steven said that that question may come up uh you know are I mean, Ray doesn't necessarily have to be donated to the CNCF, but uh, but there's got to be some sort of like assurance that uh, that the project's going to be around uh, and that it's going to be su sustainable, basically, right? Over, yeah. over the over, over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Th thanks for the advice. Highly appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Hey. And and even the additional context with spin, the recommendation that from the TOC there was spin should be donated or other non-spin uh, options would be supported by spin cube. So it was kind of one or the other of those. You know, I think that's I think that's a heavier ask for sure to like support a different core technology and have that be pluggable in that way. Um, but that that came up as a as a so, um, yeah, it was either one of those two paths that were kind of deemed the the best options. Um, okay, got it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, just some things to consider. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for bringing those up. Yeah. Th thanks for uh, providing the suggestions too. Great. Uh, yeah, we can. I I I've uh, my questions all of that. Like yeah. So we can continue on the next item. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so next we have uh, Yashodan, I think. Is that your name? Is that, did I say that correctly? And this is for the Yuki Sandbox presentation. Uh, so can I share my screen? Not yet. So I'm already good. We can hear and see at the screen. Oh, yeah, I'm sharing both screens. Uh, we don't we don't see the sharing yet. Yeah. Oop, there we go. Good? Yeah, yeah. That, that looks great. great. So hello everyone. I'm Yashodan. I'm one of the maintainers of the Yoki project and. I'll be presenting it for the CNCF sandbox today. So a little bit background on the project creation. So it was created around 2021 May. Uh, it was originally created by Toru Komatsu and it was started as an experiment to learn more about container runtimes, how they work, how the C groups and namespaces behave and have fun while doing that. And even the project has evolved since then, we still have fun uh, contributing to it. Uh, so Yuki is a low-level container runtime. It's written from scratch in Rust, and it manages the creation and setup of the container process. So in general, we have something like a kubelet running or maybe some high-level container runtime such as Podman or Docker. Then we have low-level runtime such as Run C, C Run, or Yuki in our case. And beneath that, we have the actual you know, sys uh, system API, so C groups and everything. So this is the place where the UK project currently works. And it conforms to the Open Containers Initiative uh, runtime specification. So that specification defines kind of the standard of the container runtime. So any other project that needs a container runtime can just use this specification and any runtime that conforms to this can be used with that other project. So UK just conform to that standard. Uh, for the conformance with existing ecosystem, we run various tests in our CI. So we have OCI runtime validation tests. So these are kind of the official tests provided by OCI. So those are running our CI. We also pass the container integration tests. So usually in Kubernetes, container is one of the popular runtimes. So 
the integration test for them we also run in our CR so to make sure that our code changes does not break our compatibility. We also have a CI for Podman integration, but it is not complete yet. We are passing around 450 of the tests. It is currently work in progress, part of our roadmap. And we also do a basic Kubernetes validation in our CI, so kind of spin up a single node mini cube thing and run a single container to validate that okay, actually Kubernetes can interface correctly with Yoki. Uh, for comparing it with other runtimes, uh, so Yoki, uh, you can see, uh, check the details of how these benchmarks are done. But basically, you, uh, for the these are done for the creation, running, and then deletion of the containers. And on an average, Yoki takes about 155 milliseconds. Run C takes 263 milliseconds, and C run is much faster. So it takes about 106 milliseconds on average. And these were the versions we tested. But I think we could say that Yoki is comparable with both of the two production grade runtimes that are out there. Then for the resource users, we actually use a little bit less resource than Run C. So if you try to run a container with Run C with only one MB of memory, the actual runtime itself needs more memory than that. So it does not actually function well. But because Yuki is uh, compared to a smaller and trust also, I think compiles better than the current implementation. It can also work in one MB of the memory. Uh, we also support Wasm natively, so we can run Wasm containers directly using Yuki. Uh, I will be showing a demo for this later, but yeah, we have a support for free Wasm kind of runtime. So we support Wasm Edge, Wasm or and Wasm Prime. You can compile it with specific feature flags to run Yuki with those specific runtimes. We also support rootless containers with Podman. So uh, the same container, but without using sudo. Previously, we are using sudo. Now we just run it without sudo. We can still run the container. This uses the systemd API to actually create the uh, C group and namespace which, for which we actually needed the sudo permission. So this is kind of the standard used by Podman, and we follow that. Uh, for this, we had to actually create our own dbus kind of client because the existing one in the Rust ecosystem did not fit our requirements exactly. So if anyone wants to check the discussion and uh, the final solution for that, I added the links for issue and PR. Uh, so for inner workings, yeah. So basically, uh, UQ kind of works like this. So you have a high level runtime over here which it can be Docker Podman or something else. It issues the Yuki create command, which creates the main Yuki process. It then forks over to an intermediate process, which sets up the C groups and then unshare the namespaces with the parent process. It sends the UID and GID mapping request to our main process. And then it communicates back to the intermediate process saying that, okay, the other work is done. After that, the intermediate process then forks again into the init process, which is the actual container process. It calls an unshare call to share the rest of the main sources and does a pivot route to actually set up the root directory of the container. It sets up the capabilities, and if you have enabled secure computation, it set up the seccom stuff. And then it waits for the start signal. After this, uh, both of the create and intermediate process exit. Then on the other hand, you have same again, some kind of runtime Docker or Portman, and it issues a command such as Yuki start and you have container ID. That actually spawns another Yuki process, which just does one thing. Uh, it sends the start signal to the Yuki using a pipe. And from that, it just execs the container binary and you have started up the container. This is like the high level out of your, how Yuki works. And So yeah, for the ecosystem of the project, we currently have uh, one main repo that is UK itself. It is under the containers repo uh, organization. And it has uh, set, been split into multiple crates because those are easier to organize for us. So it has a crate for doing C group related stuff. One that deals with actual setting of the container process and namespaces and everything. We have a crate which does the OCI CLI parsing. So OCI spec also defines the CLI 
format and what kind of options can we specify. So we have a special trait to pass those options and work with them. And currently we are working on two of these traits for uh, secure compilation and SE Linux. So these are currently experimental. We are still working on them. But the reasoning behind this is that currently there are no, no good or standard traits existing in the Rust ecosystem which properly deals with this stuff. There are some issue with using the actual C library bindings directly into the project. So we are trying to create a trait that can be used by the rest of the ecosystem as well as for our use cases. And we also have one more uh, trait that is OCS spec RS. It is under separate repo and it deals with passing of the OCS specification JSON. So that uh, JSON usually contains the environment variable, the annotation, everything, the container spec. And we have separated this because there are several other projects which I'll be mentioning afterwards, which also use this feature. So we have separated this as a crate. The issue that we open on our CS, uh, CNCF application is mainly for this particular repo, this uh, UP main repo and the underlying core of the crates. Are you, are you applying for Sandbox or? Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, we are applying for Sandbox. Got it. Okay. Thanks. And uh, for the project community, we currently have like 100 plus contributors. And this is just taken from the GitHub. But 100 is actually the number of people who have merged the code into our project. So these contains people who consistently contribute over many PRs. There are some people who have done just one off contributions and everything. But even apart from that, we have a lot of people who just come into the issues, mentioning the bugs or helping us with some kind of feature testing or something. So those are not content here, but they are also a part of our community and they are also a lot of help for us to develop the project. Uh, from the maintenance standpoint, we currently have six people who have the maintenance permissions. So these, uh, we can uh, merge the pull request, we can review the pull request and have the access to the repo settings and everything. And for that, we also have the governance docs, which specify how people can be selected for the maintenance and so on. Apart from that, this project is completely community driven. So we do not have a company behind us or anything. This was started kind of as a hobby project and then uh, people joined in to contribute or help out. And this is still the case. We still do it as we go and as we can help out. Uh, again, we confirm to the OCS specifications so we are, we are vendor neutral any other project that uh, requires a specification adhering runtime can use Yoki in the place of run C or C run. So that is one thing. Uh, as far as adopters, we currently have a few uh, projects that have adopted either Yoki itself or the sub libraries of Yoki as I mentioned before. So one of the bigger ones is Runvasi, which facilitates running Vasm workflows. Uh, it, the project itself uses libcontainer and libocs CLI libraries, and I believe it is used by AKS and EKS to run the VASM workloads in the cloud itself. So that kind of indirect UP helps in that. Cubespray is another project which is under Kubernetes 6 organization, and that kind of automates the deployment of multiple KLTS clusters. So it is a mix of uh, Ansible and Kubernetes setup. And that supports UP as a runtime. So you can provide UP as a runtime to it, and then all the containers in those clusters will use UP to run it. SID is one of the projects which we don't have any direct connections to, I think. It is a unicornal to sandbox applications. So like it is a big project, but it still uses lib container library, lib C groups, and other libraries that we have developed. So I would think I would be correct in saying that our developed libraries are being used by a community that is not maybe directly connected to the container space as such. And apart from that, the OCS spec RS, which I mentioned, which is used for passing the container specification JSON, that is actually used by several other uh, projects as well, because anything you want to pass the container specification for, uh, it can provide you help with. So this is from crates.io. And there are several other projects which are not directly related to UP, which also use this library. So all, all those libraries are in Rust as well then? Yes. 
Do you, do you have a, a C layer at all underneath there? Or is it all, all rust? Uh, it is all rust except for the seccomp thing we need actually to have a, a, like libseccomp underlying to do faults, which for which we are developing a rust rate separately. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, apart from that, everything is in rust. There is no C layer. Cool. Yeah, so for the roadmap, this is kind of uh, more of an informal roadmap because all of the contributions are done in their voluntary time. So whoever picks whatever first, that gets much first. But in general, the roadmap consists of doing peaceful libraries, which I mentioned before. Uh, there are OCI tests, which I mentioned, which are like, quote unquote, official OCI tests for runtime compatibility check. But there are several issues in the existing test because of which some of them are broken or some of them cannot be run properly in the CI. So we are doing a port of them, which can also be used by some other runtimes or if someone wants to check some of their projects against this test, they can use this test instead. So that porting is in progress. We are also planning to implement a container restore functionality. So Foreman provides a way to checkpoint your containers and restore from those checkpoints. And we have implemented part of the checkpoint functionality, but Restore functionality is completely remaining, so that is on our roadmap. We still need to add more testing for VASM workflows. We have to, of course, pass the Podman integration test and add the CR out there. So currently, the container D tests are run on each of the PR, each merged to the main branch to make sure we don't break anything. But CRIO still doesn't have tests in our CR, so we are planning to add that. Uh, why CNCF? So uh, we believe that containers are like the fundamental piece of technology for the CNCF project and having a community driven and vendor neutral runtime would be a very great thing. Uh, UK and CNCF would also raise the profile and awareness for the low level container runtimes. So that would both benefit OCI and the cloud native community as well. And CNCF, uh, having UK and CNCF also makes it easier for other projects to use it as a dependency. So for example, we already have worked with Dranwazi community before, and from that they needed some support for the lib container library. So we implemented that for them. They had some other things in our project. So having UK and CNCF would help us to work with many other projects as well. So that's why I think CNCF would be a good fit for UK. And, uh, that is at least the presentation. Uh, if I have a couple of minutes, can I show the demo for the VASM container? Is that fine? Yeah. yeah. So let me just share my terminal. So is it visible? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so for now, I just have set up this very basic project. It isn't us because I have the Rust setup, but it is not a requirement. You can, whatever you can compile down to VASM that can be uh, used. You can use C or something else. I just have this uh, setup. So this currently just prints the args and the env that have, container has. Uh, we can also add. And the Docker file is also basic. We just copy over the VASM file to the container and set the entry point as that VASM file. So it does not need any dependencies. For VASM containers, there is no actually underlying OS as such. Uh, you need some kind of VASM runtime to actually read and run this file. So as I said, we support three of them, VASMR, VASM Edge, and VASM Time. So yeah, you can then compile this project with target of VASM32. And then you can build the container using the builder. You need this particular annotation to let the runtime know that this is a VASM container. This is kind of a standard annotation for the VASM containers. So after that, the runtime checks this annotation and then accordingly invokes the appropriate runtime. And here using the Fordman, we specify the runtime as Yoki and then run the container that we have just built. So right now I'm using sudo, but we can also do it without two. So it will just run the container normally. And 
Let's just print it out all these things. So, yeah, any questions or anything else? Oh, it's great to see. So, um, I think I saw this project maybe two and a half years ago, and it was pretty early, but it's, it seems to be a lot more mature now. Uh, it, it's great to see that you support WASM too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, last time Toru gave uh, a presentation, right? Yeah, I think Sorry, it's, well, it, at least two years ago. Yeah. 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 Um. Do you you uh you show using Podman a lot? Do you support other non Podman options? Yeah. Like so. Is, uh, we can yeah. also use Docker, but the reason I didn't show Docker is because uh, Podman can just uh, specify, you can just specify the runtime on command line. For Docker, you need to edit the Docker config and then restart the Docker daemon and go on, which is a bit complicated. So, for example, I'm using Podman, but otherwise, you can use Docker, you can use container D, any other runtime that works with C run or run C can also use Yoku. Okay. Yeah, that was my question is can it be um, just uh plugged into container d as well as the back end uh, so it sounds like it sounds like yes that's great um so then you could use this as the runtime in in kubernetes basically right yeah uh, that would be possible yeah do you do you know of uh i guess cube spray you said supports that is that uh, has anyone else started investigating, you know, uh, running running clusters uh, regularly this way? Uh, not in our knowledge, at least no one has uh, mentioned it anywhere on our channels that they are using it for like a long-term usage. Uh, the CubeStress supports it as a runtime, but even still, like we don't know if anyone is using it as a proper Kubernetes cluster or not. Do you, do you see that as one of your long-term goals is basically being able to to do that and be adopted in that way. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it is. We can think it as one of our goals to eventually be uh, adopted, similar to like run C or C then as a standard runtime. What you can say. Uh, but even right now, like even though we are not that much popular, we can still use it in Kubernetes. We still run like basic Kubernetes validation tests in our CI. So it works. We just need more people to kind of run the test and validate it. But yeah, it is a, one of our goals to eventually be compatible and on top. Um, so you also support Docker for building, right? So you, you use build that, right? But you can also do it with Docker. And then can you also build Wasm uh, containers with, uh, with Docker? Uh, yeah, you can uh, use that as well. Uh, again, the reason I use Builda is because I think the Docker build stores it in the Docker repository versus Builda stores in the Podman. So it's more easy to use Podman with Builda and Docker with Docker. But otherwise, it is just a container image. So Yoki does not really make a difference between images built with Builda or Docker. You can use them interchangeably. That would work fine. Makes sense. So in, in terms of features, uh, do you support the same feature set as run C and C run or or or, or, or do you have a more more features? Uh, so we support uh, most of the features. As I mentioned, the checkpoint restore functionality is still in progress and there is still some issues with like interactive terminal usage, which we are currently working on. But apart from that, we don't have um, any extra usage apart from the run C or C run. We are currently at working to uh, get at least on par with them to have the 100% compatibility. And in between, if someone asks for some extended usage or something, we would also work in a more present way. Yeah, and do you have any other features that C run and run C don't support yet or, or, or just? maybe just 100% equally to those? So for um, 
like I'm not 100% sure, but I think only C run supports currently the Wasm runtime. So again, I can be wrong about that, but uh, for our aim at least right now is to have at least the 100% capability and then think about extending it onwards. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, do for as far as the CSCF, do you, you already have a an application open and a ticket open, right, for Sandbox? Uh, yes, we have it is an issue number one hundred and three. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, so this the TOC meets um, every month, I believe, and they review those applications. So. I'm expecting that my you might hear maybe by next month. But uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe maybe not because keep calling us. No, yeah, keep calling us in November. So there. There's another review in early October um, for the next round of sandbox. Uh, it should be then on their queue if they picked it up, right? They usually align their on this. Let me check. Uh, Yuki is on the list. <clears throat> So it's fourth in the list uh, for October review. So uh, that means that we as the tag um, will do an initial analysis, uh, kind of uh, write up a, a bit um, based on this presentation and talking to you and looking at the project and your application and so forth. So there may be additional questions uh, that we'd have for you that we would post to the issue uh, otherwise, um, uh, we can continue to communicate through that issue if needed for anything else. And then the TOC will have feedback in that same issue as well. Okay. That, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. So before, like, uh, before you kind of do any feedback or anything, do we have to provide anything else or do any other things before that or? Is it just now waiting on you? So there, there might be some additional questions that, that we would have uh, before the review meeting. Um, that meeting is October 8th. Uh, so if we do have those, uh, we will post those to the issue as well. And, and you'll have, um, I believe the goal is to let you have two weeks to, re to reply to those. Um, and give, give you a chance to respond and provide any additional information. I think one thing that would come up uh, is, um, I mean, you have the maintainer list, but you don't have their affiliation. So that would be asked probably. Um, so to show it's like vendor neutral. Um, and I was looking quickly at the, um, uh, at the GitHub uh, repository. And I didn't see the links there to directly, you know, to the adopters and um, code of conduct and um, that. So that would probably be asked, although I see it in the tracking issue for CNCF. So just like, you know, to, to make sure it's like aligned there. Uh, okay, got it. Uh, I think we do have a code of conduct that is if you just see in the GitHub sidebar, it links to our documentation, which yeah. has before. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And also, like I saw the maintainers there, just like I didn't see it in the GitHub. And then, like in the maintainers, I didn't see their affiliation. Just like, you know, a small play. Okay. Okay. Not okay. Got it. Serious, but it would be probably ask. Okay. We will take care of that. Thank you. Yeah. And can you also share the slides of this presentation when you have a chance? Uh, yes, I will share them. Uh, should I just send them in the Tiger and Time Channel on Slack? Or... Yeah, Tiger and Time Channel would be great. Thank you. Okay, That'd be yeah, great. Yeah. Yep. And we'll we'll link them in the in the notes then as well. Hey, a question for Steven and Danielle. Did the the project get assigned to any of us or or nobody has a uh, an owner? I saw uh, it was assigned to Rajas uh, the other day. I don't know if he's aware of okay. that. Um okay. if if not, I I can uh, I can probably do this as well, um, but I'll I'll check with Rajas if he started. Um, and the other one, there there is another runtime which is uh, Kaito, which you 
uh, commented on. So that one uh, was assigned to runtime yesterday. Yeah. So we need to we need to review that yeah. as well within the next yeah. week or so. <laughs> of course, last yeah. minute. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, <laughs> what, I think I put my name down for that one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Um. Yeah. Oh, the other thing. Uh, you said the roadmap was kind of informal. It might be useful for you to kind of write up a more, uh, uh, a less informal, a more formal roadmap uh, somewhere on the, on, the, on the repo if it's not already there. That, that um, having that roadmap kind of outlined is, is another important area. Okay, we will create a proper roadmap. I think we also kind of have a project, but in, it was informal in the sense that we don't have a specific dates for the roadmap. It is more like whichever one will get picked first will be implemented first, but yeah, we'll see that. I got gotcha. you. Yep. <clears throat> Right. Be, be, yeah, because you said it's kind of all volunteer and, and so forth. So that that makes sense. But some some general like, you know, this year, next year kind of milestones, I think kind of broad strokes might help. OK, I understood. I will create that. Record. Thanks. Cool, cool. All right. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else, reach out on Slack or in, in the issue as well, and we can try to help if there's anything comes up on your end. Otherwise, uh, we'll get back to you within the next week or so, and then look for the TOC review on October 8th. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Danielle. See you later.